Hello everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Aurora 4X. So, um, I do apologize for put, put up the video yesterday, it's been a little bit uh, difficult to record for the last couple of days and it's probably going to run that way for a few days longer, probably at least another week or two. Um, I'll do what I can to get a video out uh, every day but uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, however, um, where were we? Right, so at the moment, what we're doing is uh, slowly starting to explore outwards. Um, and uh, at this stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see about finding that uh, group of ground units so we can do that ground invasion properly. Um, what's Bandicoot doing at the moment? <clears throat> right, it's full of assault battalions. So what I'm going to do is I know that my explorers have should have some thermal sensors yes they have some thermal sensors so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of them and I'm going to see if I can get them to do another survey of um, cans uh, how are we doing busy you're yeah, not busy perfect uh, so cans was via Rockhampton so at Rockhampton, Cairns, uh, and what we'll do is we'll do another sweep of all the planets, and I think we will do a um, bit of a slower uh, uh, increment sweep as well. Hopefully that won't uh, make any problems. There we go. So first of all, we'll wait for the explorer to catch up. How are we doing for? No, not Bunbury. Cans. Can we find the new system again? Yes, we did. Alright, so we found the system of Bunbury from Wollongong. So, uh, that's a new one. We're getting finding lots of planets that we can colonize as well, which is absolutely great. <clears throat> I'll move these out a bit. There we go. Okay, come on. <clears throat> All right, uh, Sydney has just become breathable. So we will now go to the two Sydney colonies. Where's terraforming? Terraforming, terraforming. Here we go. All right, so we've got 5.2 and 0. Okay, so Sydney A4 is now fully habitable because we already have plenty of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and all that good stuff to bring the percentage low enough and have the temperature high enough. So this should become a civilian destination soon enough. Um fair amount of minerals, so we'll need to set up a mining outpost there. As for six, this one will require... It's going to require some greenhouse gas. Ooh, 136, is that... We're going to have enough greenhouse gas. Hopefully. We might not be able to terraform this one. In case we can't, um, that will give me an excuse to show you genetic engineering. But for now, let's go for an atmosphere of... Let's go for an atmosphere of one for now. And we'll see how that goes. Um, but we do have a terraformer above Sydney A4. Mm. 
which is already attached to someone. Do we have anything else in Sydney that needs terraforming? Uh, we got this one, which is a dwarf planet. So a stamp of 10. All we'd have to do is add in some oxygen and this one will be available. So this will be an easy terraformer. Um, this one's got a bit of a temperature factor, but there's nothing on here worth it. No, there isn't any of these. Um, mm -hmm. How about this one? Uh, we have, well, we'd have to strip the hydrogen. And we have helium and nitrogen. And what's the temperature? Minus 138. I think we're actually working on it already, aren't we? No. No. For this one, I think we will move on and move the terraformer elsewhere. So where can we move the terraformer? Well, we've got Newcastle and Cairns at the moment that are open to us. Uh, but I think we wanted to colonize Canberra as well. So let's start work on that. So we'll get one of the columns. Canberra already has one, so build a jump gate. And then go back home. Here we go. So that's going to take it a while. Uh, for the moment, we'll just leave these where they are and we'll see how they do. Okay. Uh, how are we doing on the Sydney colony? We've got 34 million people now. Uh, okay, so we've got artifacts that are not being produced. We've got a surplus of chemicals. That's going to be trade. Yes, good. Uh, infra surface of luxury food and recreational drugs. Okay, well, Earth is producing luxury food, but it doesn't look like anything's producing recreational drugs. So Sydney Prime is going to be a fantastic source of chemicals and recreational drugs for trade, which means that we are going to have a um, good amount of trade happening between Sydney Prime and Seoul. So that is excellent. Okay. Ah, we do need to go back to Cairns, don't we? Okay, hasn't arrived yet. Uh, we have finished research rate as well. Oh, no, silly thing. So, with that, our research capacity has gone up, but it looks like we're actually down some workers. Uh, set that as stable. And that will bring the population back up. Um, yeah, so it looks like um, we're actually suffering a bit of an industrial penalty. So that will hopefully get back up once we get people back to Earth. Um, but for the moment, how's our construction doing? Um, let's go for fighter production rate, and we'll go for civilian economy by 20%, and then we'll do mining and shipyard operations. We'll move the shipyard operations up one. <clears throat> okay, that's pretty good research. So we'll let that run. Next on the block will be uh, 20... No, a Delta Shields. Then our Cryo Module, and then our Laser Rate. So we're going to have boarding crews uh, probably within two or three years. Okay. How are we doing, Explorer? Okay. 
Okay, it's only a few days off. We'll start doing one day cycles now. Here it is. All right, salvage fleet has returned. There we are. Oh, excellent. So when you're delivering lots of components, do the unload all facilities, um, all, all installations, that will unload all components as well, which is absolutely brilliant. So if we go to our stockpiles now, so we have uh, magnetic fusion drives, we'll save those until we have the tech ready. I don't want to risk um, accidentally getting rid of them. Um, now, I'm trying to figure out which ones are theirs. I think these are mine. These are definitely theirs. Can we learn anything? No. So we'll get rid of those. ECCM, we can definitely learn from. So... Um, so if we get our note, here we go. So ECM5, disassemble. All right, 400 research points and 1,200 research points. Beautiful. And then we've got 1,600 for ECCM4. And again. And again. All right, we've got a nice amount of uh, tech for ETCM4. Fire controls. This one is not mine, but we're not learning anything out of it, so get rid of it. Uh, magnetic confinement. These are ion. Gas called fast reactor. That's ion. Magnetic confinement fusion. Okay, uh, I think this is the one that we actually want. Yeah, so a gas called other ones that we are using at the moment. So we want to disassemble the magnetic fusion. So let's see how much tech we get out of that. 50 research points. Ugh. Oh, hang on. So we're getting 1350 for the reactor itself, plus a little bit of research points for the power boost, which is okay. So we'll disassemble those, another 1800, 2250, and 2250. So we've got a little bit of tech from those. Uh, fire control, are these mine or theirs? I don't know. No, that'd be a point defense one. Uh, 50 size one launcher, size four, size six, 120 size one. Okay, so these are mine. Are these theirs? I don't know. Scrap them. So it's four and six launchers. These are not mine because I always reduce mine. Nothing there. And nothing there. So we're not going to learn anything from there. Missile destroyers, get rid of those. Oh, missile launchers, get rid of those and those. Uh, thermal sensor. Ah, we've got 160 points out of that. Excellent. Uh, twin tennis simulator. This is theirs, but I'm not sure if we're going to learn anything out of it. No, nothing. Scrap it. Okay. So, we managed to grab a fair amount of tech out of him, which is excellent. Let's see how we did. So, on the power and propulsion, we got almost 10,000 uh, Research for magnetic confinement reactor, which is great. Uh, we also got 200 uh, tech RP for reactor power boost, which is meh because I don't use it anyway. Anyway, personally, um, we got a fair amount of tech for ECM and ECCM. Uh, what else are we up to? Not much else at the moment. 
but we have a nice amount, which is great. Um, do we have any more wreckage? Okay, so we might have some wrecks in Bendigo. Oh, we have some in Kegrolling. Oh, that's just Enterprise. And Bendigo is probably going to be Enterprise as well. No. There's some wrecks in, wreckage in Bendigo. I might have to go visit Bendigo and find out what's going on because it's saying that we should have it, but... Hmm. Oh well. Let's keep working. Ah, uh, no. We are still exploring cans. There they are. Okay. They are on cans A1. Alright, so Bandicoot, go to cans A1. And unload all grand units. George. Can they one? Okay, nothing important. All right, so we have a hostile population and ground forces on cans. Okay, cans A1. All right, so if we go to ground units, so we have our two brigades. So we have a, a significant attack strength and a significant <clears throat> or fairly reasonable defense. So what we will do is we will initiate non-PDC, Cairns Aliens, 1, 5, 6, and order and attack. And you can see here that all ground, use, ground forces on the planet are attacking the aliens. <clears throat> so we will slowly move ahead. Here we go. Got some ground combat. So uh, ground attack on Cairns A1 versus Cairns Aliens, attack strength of 58 with a combat ratio of just under 5 to 1. So that means our strength is, I believe, 5 times larger than theirs. Um, chance of attacking the is 2.1%. As, well, as a result of experience gains, Colonel so-and-so has increased the combat bonus, which is great. Um, casualties inflicted on enemy ground unit, estimated loss is 28%. So they've lost approximately 28% of their entire... Uh, military strength in the attack, um, while we have lost virtually zero. That is awesome. So we'll move on to the next round of attacks. Ground war, of course, takes a lot longer than a space war does. There we go. Alright. Nothing important. Uh, here we go. Okay. Next round of ground attack. Attack strength of 58.2 with a combat ratio of 6.2 because obviously their ground units have um, suffered casualties. Uh, attack unit loss is virtually zero. Uh, we got some combat bonuses a bit from combat experience. And another 21% of their forces have been destroyed. So, we are winning quite thoroughly.
next round of attacks should be back in now. Alright, how did we do? Um, combat ratio of 8.6. Some more training. And estimated loss is only 8%. Hmm. Oh, and we have finished constructing our AMM, so we can actually order Shoalwater to rearm now. Hold the ordinance, there we go. <clears throat> can they actually do that while they have orders? No, they can't. Okay, so we have to wait for um, Marathon to finish refitting first. But we'll go ahead and just jump to the next combat section. Alright, ground combat is 11, combat ratio is 11, 14, another 14% 14 of their forces have been wiped out. Um, we also found some minerals on Bunbury B1. Uh, accessibility is rubbish, so probably no good to us right now. Still waiting for the ground forces to be exterminated. It would be really nice to see how much they have. Ah, there we go. Enemy ground unit has been destroyed. Do they have any ground troops left? I don't think they do. Nope, they do not. So the next step will be to attack the population, and that should be... An immediate capture. There we go. No defending units are present and no garrison enemy PDCs remain in operation. And population has surrendered to our victorious ground forces. Yes. Brilliant. All right. So let's see what we got out of it. Uh, so if we go to cans now, so we have A1 human. We'll have to cycle forward a little bit. There we go. Let's try now. Close that, reopen. Okay, so we've got Kanze 1 here. Now that's R1, because we know because that's an Imperial population. Where is the captured population? That's A5. Probably the same most, most. Yep, there it is. So as you can see, it is just a deep space tracking station. So um, that's the 5 thermal. So there was no actual living population there. It was just a deep space tracking station. Um, I'm really not sure... Uh, why they put troops here, but oh well. Uh, suitability cost is 8.5, so we're not going to be trying to colonize it. Um, but you can see here the political status is currently conquered. Now, political status is... Um, it does basically two things, right? The first one is that it reduces the total output of pretty much everything the planet does. Um, over time, the political status will slowly shift from conquered to imperial population, whereupon it goes up to 100%. Now, in a conquered population, what you can do is, you can't see it here, but you can actually train um, FLUs, or forced labor units, basically slaves. Um, FLUs are essentially, um, they, they are essentially like a construction brigade, Except I think they're 10 times larger than a construction brigade. So they're great for, you know, uh, having a little, little bit of production on a hostile planet. But essentially, um, 
yeah, it's up to you whether you use them or not. And then, and you do need troops and stuff to keep them in order as well. Um, the other thing you can do, uh, where is it? There is a little check mark that you can use to stop them. There it is. Prevent increase in political status, right? So this will stop them, stop the population from from um, being transformed from conquered and moving up the chain to imperial. So if you want to keep them as a farm for um, forced labor units, uh, then you can do that. So stop them from advancing population and just let them breed out and just skim off, skim um, population off the top. Uh, as for me, I will be uh, leaving them as they are because I can't be bothered um, doing anything with the population at the moment and it's just a waste of time really. So I will be taking the ground forces it is and relocating them somewhere more useful uh, where that is not really sure at the moment but we'll find something uh, actually I'm sure there are places in Cairns where we can uh, do an archaeological dig do we have anybody here at the moment we do not. No, wait. Yeah, we do not. Um, let's start a dig at Cairns A5 then. I mean, we have the troops. Here we go. Unload all ground units from Transport Bay. And what we'll do is we'll chip it out a little bit and we will drop a Xeno team. So, one, two... Three, four, five. There we go. So that's a Xeno team. They'll slowly start chugging away, and we will hopefully dig something up. As for George, well, he's done this duty. Let's send them back to Earth. And then. Let's reroute him Melbourne's red circle, that means unexplored. Do we have a, things in Melbourne? I don't think we've actually finished the Melbourne survey. What's the red ring? Circle red, no jump point survey. Hey, we haven't completed the jump point survey in Melbourne. Okay, let's see if there's anything there. Cool. Then it could fail to unload. Oh, because it didn't pick any up. And, and, and. Go back and pick up those battalions. Okay, good. Okay, now they're actually garrisoned, so we'll go ahead and drop them all off. There we go. Okay, so now we have two digs, active dig sites at the moment, I believe. Let's go double check. So we got one here. And we got one at Newcastle as well. So we have two teams at the moment. Uh, one at Cairns, one at Newcastle. And hopefully... They won't take much longer to find something. How are we doing for time? Half an hour. Uh, we'll get a bit more. Uh, 
Let's see if anything interesting happens. Robert Aiken, how you doing? Okay. I'll wait for him to finish his duties and then send them back home. Okay, morale increases. Yep, that's fine. Okay, Canberra 5 has completed. There we go. Uh, so, so that's a geo survey. Uh, yeah, we're still good. I think we can squeeze out a grav survey before we send them back home. So we'll do that. And we've just finished fighter production right up to 12, which will help with getting any more fighters out. And there are the shields. Um, we'll keep working on Epsilon shields. Um, I think at around the Epsilon mark, I'll probably start designing actual shield generators as well. Um, I like the 3 and the Epsilon that give a good amount of shields for uh, generator mass. So... Um, we'll start shielding our ships soon. So our next generation of ships is probably going to be running on um, magnetic confinement fusion, and we're going to be running with shields, as well as some improved lasers and some much improved missiles. So we should have a fairly impressive fleet at that stage. Not that our current fleet is not impress impressive, of course. You know, it has killed two queens so far. So, now we just need to find a proper enemy to fight. Okay, so KNZ-1 has changed to Occupied from Conquered. So you can see now that the population has changed to Occupied and the, and the modifier is now up to 40%. Uh, we're up to 82. So we do have a worker shortage of 51.6 million. Uh, prefab is almost done. Uh, the, the fact that we're building a mine is really not helping. So what I think I might do is start shipping those mines off-world. Uh, that will definitely help with the worker um, shortage. Um, Corba mites almost exhausted. Sorium, Corundium, and Duranium are almost exhausted. So uh, yeah, in about I think in about four four years we will start shipping the mines off-world. Nothing new. Okay. 
Stuart has been prefabricated now, so we will go ahead and start shipping it. So salvage fleet. Uh, we will detach these. So earth. Uh, load PDC steward components, we add that. We will then go to Sydney, Sydney Prime, unload PDC components of Stuart, head back to Seoul and refuel. And we will cycle this so that we get hopefully all the components across. And that will have opened up. Where is it? Oh, right, we're back in Seoul. And that's a sign that Canberra is now open for business. Let's go have a look real quick. How are we doing on Canberra? We've got lots of asteroids and lots of things to colonize. Um, let's. Let's go for camera prime first. That is will be our first target. So county. Uh, which one is it? That's the one. And we'll go back to Seoul. Then to camera. Then to camera prime. Yes. All right. And in the meantime, we will get Canberra Prime set up. Canberra Prime. All right. Take Earth like tectonics. Not bad. So, what do we need first? First up, we need to strip the methane and probably the ammonia as well. Not just the methane, um, but the ammonia is liquid ammonia, so that might, hmm, just thinking, this is a total ice ball. Uh, I might start with adding the oxygen in first, actually. Oxygen, add 0.1. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, well, so we'll do the terraforming a little bit differently on this one, just so that we um, try and pres try not to drop the planet too cold. Because by removing the methane, uh, that will reduce the greenhouse factor uh, just a little bit. So we've got a 0.14 greenhouse. We don't necessarily want to um, get rid of that. We want to get the temperature up. Because if we can get the temperature up, that will pump up the albedo as well, uh, which will get it even warmer, which means that once we remove the methane, uh, it won't be uh, so terrible. So that is now on the way. So it's up 40 minutes. So I'll put a break in the episode now. Um, and uh, tomorrow... Hopefully, when I get the record next, uh, we will continue on with the terraforming of Canberra. And we will also uh, work on starting to mine out Sydney. So I will see you all tomorrow.